Get your special discount offer on the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash video. Now you set up inventory part items within the item list to create items for which you want to track the quantity and the value within QuickBooks. Now you cannot show inventory value for a manufacturing company or where the inventory value is changed as it goes through some sort of process as that's simply too complex for QuickBooks to track. However, if you do have items that you purchase from a vendor, hold as inventory, and then resell to customers, you can set those items up as inventory part items for ease of tracking within QuickBooks. In order to do that, of course, you need to open your item list, which you can do by choosing lists and then selecting item list from the menu bar. Within the item list, click the item button in the lower left corner, and then choose the new command. That'll open the new item window. From the drop-down that appears, select inventory part in order to create a new item of the inventory part item type. And notice that to the right it gives you a description that this is used for goods that you purchase, track as inventory, and resell. So you would then click into the item name slash number field and input a unique name or item number for this particular item within the list. If it's a sub-item of a larger item category, then you can check the sub-item of checkbox and select the major category from the drop-down. If you have a manufacturer's part number, you can enter that here. Then in the purchase information section below, you would input the description of the item that you would like to use within your purchase transactions, such as your purchase orders. If there's a set cost that you pay for this item, you can input that into the cost field. That'll be the default cost that appears when you use it within a purchase transaction. Once again, you can change it at that time, but this is just a default value. If you don't know a default cost that you would pay, you can leave it at zero and then just set it each time that you use it within the purchase form. You can also select a default cost of goods sold account to associate with the item using the COGS account drop-down. And if you have a preferred vendor for this item, you can use the preferred vendor drop-down to select the name of the vendor. Then in the sales information section, you input a description used in your own sales transactions when you sell this item. And it may be the same as the one used in purchase transactions, or it might be different. But you just input that into the description on sales transaction field. For the sales price, this would be the default selling price of the item. Once again, you can change that when you use it in a sales form, of course. You can sell it for whatever amount you would like, but the default price is what you would put in here. And so when you select this storm door, in this case, from, say, an invoice in the future, you're going to see this description appear by default with this price by default. And once again, you'll be able to change that if desired within the invoice. Now the tax code is whether it's a taxable or non-taxable item. So in this case it would be a taxable item. For the income account you would then use the drop down to select the income account used to track the income from the sale of this item within your sales forms. In the inventory information section at the bottom you would then use the asset account used to track the value of the inventory on hand. You can input a reorder point, which is the number at which you would want to reorder more. And then you can put in opening balances for the item if you're creating a new item for a brand new company and you want to input the amount of inventory that they had on hand at the time that they started the company. So for new company files, you could put in the number on hand and the total value and then use the as of drop down to select the start date of the company file. In the future, you probably would not use that, much like opening balances for accounts. It's usually used when you're, when you're creating a brand new company file. And in the future, you would simply create your item, and then you would order the item, once again using like a purchase order, and that's how you're going to get your initial stock in. So once you've got the item created then, just click OK. Now you'll be free to use it within your purchase 
transaction forms and your sale transaction forms. Like what you see? Get your special discount offer on the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com slash video. Over two dozen titles are available in Microsoft Office, QuickBooks, Photoshop, and much more.